Salute omnes. This is Malgus Tarkab. In this video, I'm going to take you on a basic overview of Latin verbs, their main characteristics, and how they are organized. Latin verbs have three main characteristics. They have person, they have number, and they have tense. These characteristics hold true for English verbs as well. Now, person has to do with who is doing the speaking in the conversation. Now, in this diagram right here, this circle represents a conversation that is going on right now. This fella is the speaker, this person is the listener, and then this person is outside the conversation. They're not speaking, listening, or a part of it, anything going on. In a first-person conversation, the speaker is speaking to the listener about themselves. So a pronoun we would use to exhibit that would be I, as in I am a teacher and I am recording a video right now. Second person, in a second-person conversation, the list the speaker is speaking to the listener about the listener so in this scenario the speaker is speaking to the listener about something they are doing you are listening to my video right now you hopefully are learning more about latin now in a third person conversation the speaker is speaking to the listener about some person who is outside of the conversation they are not speaking to them they're talking about them so, for example, if I was telling you something about my father, he grew up in North Carolina. If I'm telling you something about my wife, she is a first grade teacher. If I'm talking about the day, it is a bright and sunny day today. Now, this has to do if it is plural or singular. If it's plural, it's the same sort of thing, only here we have someone else involved with it. So instead of saying I, we would say we. We are having a conversation. We are going outside after class. And we'll skip over second person for a second. I'll come back to it in just a second. But in third person, again, if we're talking about more than one person who isn't a part of the conversation, they are listening to the speaker in an hour. They will be outside before us. Now, second person, English doesn't make a huge distinction between second person singular versus second person plural. In fact, sometimes they'll use you interchangeably there, and it can be hard to tell unless you're looking at context. However, Latin does make a very specific uh, distinction there, and because I am a Southerner and I speak uh, Southern Latin, I will say y'all. Sometimes people will say you all here, but I will say y'all. So if I'm speaking to a group, y'all are listening to this video right now. So that's person. Now let's take a look at number. We have two options for number. We have singular, one, and we have plural, more than one. Now you may be thinking at this point, well, verbs don't really have number, do they? Well, they do. Let's look at some English examples. The girl sings. Now a common mistake that a lot of people will make is that this S here makes this verb plural. That is quite to the contrary. This is a singular verb. This exhibits what we would call subject verb agreement. Both the subject and the verb are singular. An example of this with plural would be the girls sing. Again, notice that is a common mistake that people will say this is a singular verb. This is not. This is a plural verb and it matches the plural subject. They're both plural. We have subject verb agreement. This is a little bit easier in Latin because you just look to the endings and the endings are singular and plural and they have to match. So if I wanted to say the girl sings in Latin, I would say puella cantat. Both of these are singular endings, and so we have subject verb agreement. And if I wanted to make it plural, puellae cantant. Both of these are plural endings, so again, we have subject verb agreement. Last, we have tense. Tense is time. It tells us when the action occurred. Now, there are three divisions in time. We have what's happening right now, we have what's happened in the past, and we have what's yet to come. However, in the English language, we have 14 different tenses that are spread out throughout those uh, three divisions in time. Latin has six different tenses, and from that we can make a couple of reasonable inferences. First of all, that there's more than one way to translate some of these Latin tenses into English, and second of all, they're not going to all have the same. So some tenses will have more translation than others. So Latin has six tenses. 
English has 14. Now earlier in the video we talked about Latin characteristics and I said that the three main characteristics are person, number, and tense. And they are. But verbs also have in Latin voice and mood. But these are advanced concepts that will be covered later on. I hope this video was helpful. If you have additional questions, please leave them in the comments. Have a great day and I hope to talk with you soon.